Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Ross here in World of Warships with another buy or pass review, this time on the Murmansk. The Murmansk is a Russian Tier 5 cruiser that is basically the American Tier 5 uh, cruiser, the Omaha, on steroids. Why is it on steroids? Well, let's go into that. First, we can go into the tech tree and look at the uh, USA Omaha. We can click on here, and the Omaha, we can see this is, it takes all this to upgrade. When it is fully upgraded, it has 8.6 rounds per minute with a range of 12.7 kilometers, and its torpedoes go 5.5 kilometers. Now, if we look at the Murmansk, on the other hand, the torpedoes go, if it loads here, goes 8.0, so you get 3.5 more kilometers, and then the range is 14.8, so you get another 2 kilometers range on that. Now, once you actually get the scout plane out, though, on this, it can reach out to like 17 kilometers. So it's basically the Omaha and all the benefits of the Omaha. It's the same as well. It's 152 millimeter guns, but it also has the same rate of fire, and but it does good damage. So let's get into the game and see how this plays. So we're in game here, but this is actually a replay. I enabled replays this recently, and I encourage you guys to enable yours as well. In the description, I will link to the forum page on how to do it, and I encourage you guys to actually send me your replays as well. And why do I ask you to send them to me? Well, so you can actually be in my videos as well. It's pretty easy to do, and as long as you send them to my email, which is theflyingross at gmail.com, I will also put that in the link so you can send them to me. Now, the Murmansk. As I went over, a tier 5 Russian cruiser. It has a pretty amount of guns, good amount of guns, because it's the Omaha. Now, one thing a lot of people do with the Omaha, and not just the Omaha, but in general with cruisers, is just fire HE in an insane amount. You don't need to fire HE all the time. This is AP, and you can see that I am just doing Citadel after Citadel. And this round is another Citadel. That's three Citadels already in, like, two salvos. And we're just going to keep on pestering this guy. Now we have three total Citadels on that salvo, and uh, five in general. And this is just next round of salvo right here is going to kill him. And we're the same ship. But why did I kill him? Well, I killed him faster because he was using HE. And I wasn't. So, the Omaha definitely has uh, good guns, just like the Mermans, but the Mermans, I just feel like it's better. I don't know why it's better. Well, range, I guess. And also, I feel like it's very accurate, and I don't necessarily know if that's uh, true compared to, to the Omaha, but the Mermans just feels very accurate. Now, here, talking about more about AP and HE, we have the St. Louis, which has a really good armor profile, meaning that it has a good belt that sits above the waterline, and it's very hard to sit it up but because the Citadel sits underneath. Now we watch that, uh, these rounds go in, we're gonna see that you can still hit the Citadel, you just have to have your rounds plunge in underneath the water right there and get a Citadel. Because the Citadel is underneath the water line. But does not mean that you need to use HE all the time. Yes, you could HE burn down a, the St. Louis, but still overall the amount of damage that you will do with AP against cruisers like this is still going to be better at distance like this than HE. Now, if you get close into a uh, St. Louis, it might be a good idea to transfer to HE just because you might not get be able to get through that belt and actually aim for the waterline. Since this is at distance, you can see these rounds are plunging down uh, to him, so also plunging in through his deck, but also down at an angle for the waterline for another Citadel hit. Now I use the scout plane, and the scout plane not only increases your range, but also it changes how you see. Now since this is a replay, you can see that you can't see the pegs of plus, through, uh, plus 10 and minus 10, so you can't see where I'm actually aiming in comparison to his hole, but basically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm aiming above his hole and a uh, little bit to the right, and another citadel. And you can see we're already up to, what's that, is that 8 citadels I believe? And it just keeps on going, and this is what the Mermans does. At distance, the Mermans can just punish things. And this is at 12 kilometers to 11 kilometers, and I'm punishing the St. Louis constantly. And he's not aiming at me yet, he's aiming at someone else. And I'm not the only one doing damage to him, but I am the one that's putting the most rounds downrange onto this guy. And then he's dead. So that's kill number two. 
Now moving on from kill number two, I see still have the scout plane up and I see this battleship out here so I'm going to transfer to HE because now this is a time to use HE as the AP rounds might not do as much damage as our HE rounds can do against battleship. So I'm going to use this time to actually get some more damage, get some more rounds down range onto targets and you can see that four hits got 1400 so it's still not better than the 310 damage per round that the AP does but I don't necessarily know if that would do the same amount of damage against this battleship. Now I'm not paying attention too much to the uh, map right now but one of my teammates says right about now protect the CV. And I said right about now, right there, <laughs> protect CV. And I'm looking around now, I'm like, okay, there's a destroyer there. I'm like, is that the one? I'm like, oh no, it's the one over here. And he's danger close. I'm not going to be able to save the CV. But what I'm actually going to be able to do right now is actually save the game. And, you know, a competent player in any ship can absolutely wreck someone that is maybe not competent. And I'm not saying that I'm the best player out there. I actually suck sometimes quite often. I don't have a freaking high win rate. It's at 50%. I don't have a high kill death ratio. It's like at 1.65 now. And I average like 2,000 or like I think 1,500 or 1,400 like per game now through all my games experience wise. But... Um, some ships I, I do better with, but that's because I play a whole bunch of ships. I don't just play like, you know, one ship class. I don't play just battleships. I play everything. Destroyers, cruisers, carriers. I'm not good at carriers, but you can see where I'm aiming against this uh, destroyer as well. I'm leading him pretty uh, well, and not now because I actually hit his engine there, but um, I'm going to lead him pretty good because the actual meters per second velocity that the rounds leave, it's a very slow round. It takes, it takes a good amount of time for the round to actually get the target. And, you know, so there's kill number three. His torpedoes got re launched in a hurry. And now I'm going after this second destroyer. So that's two cruisers down, one destroyer down. And let's go chase this other freaking uh, destroyer here. And, you know, I'm noticing here that we are capping theirs, but they're capping our cap. And we have four destroyers in their cap, but I have no idea what's in our cap. But here's a destroyer. And... I don't know what this guy's doing. Like, I really honestly don't. Um, you can see right here, his gun is not aimed at me, and his torpedo tubes are not uh, uh, aimed at me either. And I don't understand why he didn't fire torpedoes here. I don't know if he was not, uh, reloading or something, but it just it doesn't add up because it looks like the torpedoes are still in there, and I don't necessarily know if that's a graphical bug or anything, but it looks like they're there. And, um, yeah, he's not firing. Oh, right there, they're, uh, maybe he just reloaded. And I just got lucky. But nonetheless, yeah, he's dead. So that's two destroyers, two cruisers done. It's four kills already. And look at that. We're losing. They're about to cap us. And yeah, so I now have to take out another destroyer. And this destroyer almost wrecks me. Almost. You can see, again see where I'm aiming. But it's also two versus one right here. I have a cruiser over there. And this was only seconds after I finished one destroyer. So it's one destroyer and a cruiser versus lonesome me. And look at these base defense things. This is where experience comes from. You get a good amount of experience from getting these base defenses. Um, those torpedoes from the cruiser, they freaking didn't hit. They died. I just kind of guess where to aim there. And I just want to keep on putting rounds down on this destroyer. And I know that the torpedoes are coming. So I don't necessarily know when they're coming. And I'm actually doing something really stupid right here as I'm teed up against him. And I start my turn. I look in there. I thought I could make it between the gap, but I actually just go ahead and slide. I needed to shift my rudder over, but I survived. I did get hit by two torpedoes, but I almost lost it right there. It was very well, I could have died. And that would have been just really bad. Now I switched the AP, even though his back is turned to me, I switched the AP because I just know I can absolutely penetrate through him. And you can see right here, I'm still doing good damage. 1500 for right there, you know, yes, 310, it's not doing that well of damage, but right there, Citadel and Confederate. That means that six targets I have hit and I've done a substantial damage, uh, substantial damage to each one of them. And I'm just punishing this cruiser and I get a little bit of help from the cruiser and there is my six kill. And that was a pretty good game, I would say. Now I go on to keep on punishing other ships, and I'm going to keep on punishing this said destroyer up here. And, or not destroyer, sorry, battleship. And it's just to show you how well that this does. I don't have that much health, 3,400, but I'm still in the game. And I'm firing HE, and I'm just constantly sending rounds downrange, laying on fire, harassing him, keeping out him away from our cap. And 
I'm basically acting like a long range battleship. And with this, I actually am get almost as dangerous as a battleship at range. Because I have just the same amount of range at, almost at tier 5 as most tier 5 battleships do when you actually have this plane up and running. And you can see I'm lighting fires, I'm getting hits, putting rounds down range, and making sure also, you know, sometimes to keep that line of sight there. Because uh, I don't necessarily want rounds to come down, down on me. But he's firing at some other targets, so it really doesn't matter. So we're just going to keep on firing this until the end of the game, and we actually win it. So we win the game, 533,000 credits earned, 4,500 experience earned, Confederate, high caliber, first blood, 3,000 base experience earned, and that was also turned out to be 4,500 with the premium accounts. 100,000 damage done. So my recommendation is a buy. If you have the disposable income and you can't necessarily afford the Atlanta or a higher tier uh, premium, go with this. It is a good ship. If you liked the video, please hit the thumbs up. It means a lot. Until next time, I'm the Flying Ross. See you on the high seas.